Hello, foodie friends <clears throat> and followers. Uh, Jen Soto here, and I am coming at you for our Tuesday Live at 5. And I'm super excited because today we are going to make sous vide egg bites. Actually, no, I take the back scratch. We're not making sous vide egg bites. We're going to make them in our quick cooker. Why? Because sous vide egg bites take a really long time to make and we can make them in our quick cooker and they taste pretty much the same. So um, strap in, if you love Starbucks like me, then you are really gonna enjoy this recipe. So if you're watching um, live or you're watching on the replay, go ahead and put a comment down below. Let me know that you're here, say hi. Tell me your favorite thing to get at Starbucks or make it home if you're more of a make it home kind of person and we will get started. I can't wait to show you guys this. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about our deluxe micro cooker. That's what we're gonna use today to make this. And this is a pressure cooker. It cooks sous vide. It's also a slow cooker. Um, it is just so versatile. So um, it has a bunch of preset settings on here. I think 16. And, um, and you can get some accessories to go with it. If you have never made boiled eggs in a pressure cooker, you are missing out. They are so easy to peel. They turn out perfectly. It's amazing. Um, if you have ever seen, um, we make, I make sometimes chicken with rice in there, especially if I'm doing batch cooking. Um, chicken and rice is really delicious in the quick cooker. Um, but we're going to use our, our egg bite mold today. So this is the egg bite mold. So sous vide, um, just since I mentioned it, I might as well tell you what it is. So sous vide is a slow method of cooking and you use water to cook the food. It takes a while, but you get precise temperature settings, which is really nice. If you're doing like pork chops or steaks or chicken breasts, um, you can you can set it and kind of forget it. It will keep it warm and it will never overcook. So that's really nice. So if you're having people over for dinner, you want to have, you got some steaks, you want to do them really right, do them sous vide. And then you just put them on a sizzle skillet or on the grill pan, you know, just to grill them up real quick, just to get the outside nice and seared, and then you're good. And it's the steak, I cannot tell you, is so good. Pork chops, amazing. So, but we're going to go ahead and make our sous vide egg bites today. So I'm going to go ahead and prep all, I mean, we're going to go ahead and make our egg bites today. So if you're big Starbucks fan like me, then you will probably love this recipe. So the recipe calls for six eggs and a third of a cup of cottage cheese, but we're going to change it a little bit. Um, the recipe is actually available on my website. I'll post it in the comments, but um, we're going to change it a little bit because we're going to do it in the quick cooker. So we need to make some alterations. That's in the recipe at the bottom. Now we're going to use our pressure cooker, the deluxe multi cooker. If you have a pressure cooker, you can do the same thing. You can do this also. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut up my toppings because I've, I've got some of this stuff already done. But I'm going to go ahead and cut up this bacon here. I just use pre-cooked bacon. We buy our bacon from Costco and it's mostly cooked. So um, I could cook this a little bit more if I wanted to. I love, if I'm going to add bacon to something, I love just um, cutting it into little pieces before I cook it. So we're just gonna do this. We're just gonna add these in here. Like I said, this is ready to eat right here. So, all right, so we've got that, and then we need to grate some cheese. So the Starbucks recipe has Gruyere cheese, and one of them has Gruyere cheese and bacon. So I just have some Gruyere cheese here, that I'm gonna grate, not a whole lot. Grate it really quickly. Okay, I probably could do some more, but that's how much I got out. <laughs> So that's how much we're doing, okay? Um, and we'll put that right there. I think last time I did more and it was just a little bit too much. You can also add eggs or spinach in here. I will say, if you're gonna add eggs, make sure you get all of the, they have a lot of moisture in them, so you don't wanna, um, you wanna make sure you seed them and get all that moisture out, or use um, sun-dried tomatoes and then kind of rehydrate them. You could just put them in some really hot water for about 10 minutes and that'll rehydrate them. They can cut them up that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get this ready. This is the smallest bowl from our stainless mixing bowl set. So we need our four eggs, and I went ahead and cracked them already ahead of time. You guys don't need to see me crack four eggs. We need a quarter cup of cottage cheese. I already went ahead and pre-measured that in the mini or the small measure all cup. Okay, and then we need a half a teaspoon of salt. So we'll just put that in there. 
and then we're gonna mix it. And you wanna mix it really well because you want that, um, you want the cottage cheese to get really good and mix in there. So I'm actually gonna use my mixer to do this. This is the Flex Plus. And as you can see, I have a container right here that has all the pieces and parts. And I'm just gonna stick it in here. The Flex Plus also is an immersion blender and a food processor. And so it's kind of one of those things you put together, so. Okay, so I need to make sure this is on and push the button to turn it on. And then, I'm not, I don't wanna whip it, but I do wanna make sure that this cream cheese gets good and mixed in here. And the reason I'm using a metal bowl is because if you're using a glass bowl, you can cause chips with your blender. Okay, so just mix that in there pretty well. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down the sink. Okay, and then we're going to mix the cheese in. Okay, and we'll just stir it up. Mix that cheese in there really well. Okay, you could use an immersion blender if you wanted to to really get it good and mixed. But again, I don't wanna froth up those um, eggs too much. All right, so I need a little bit of oil. And I'm actually gonna use this pan, that I, or this bowl that I use the eggs for. I'm just gonna put a little oil in here, some olive oil. Okay, don't need a whole lot. And use my um, chef's knife to kind of coat the um, egg bite mold. So this is the egg bite mold. You can buy this, you know, separately. Works in a pressure cooker, works in our sous vide. It also works in the oven. And in the, um, in the, uh, whatever it's called, in the recipe, um, kind of gives you some ideas for things you can do. All right, so we're just gonna pour, I love this little handle here, it makes it so easy to pour. And we're gonna fill them about halfway full. Okay, I think maybe three quarters of the way full. And we'll start with halfway. Oh, some of these might have more, we need to put some more cheese in that first one, right? All right, in those first ones, they didn't get a lot of cheese. Okay. All right, so we've got all that pork in there, and then I'm just gonna put um, a little bit of the bacon on the top, okay? I wanna use all the bacon, so I'm putting all the bacon on the top, <laughs> and then we're gonna put our lid on. All right, so whenever you're cooking in a pressure cooker, you wanna make sure you have water. So um, we're gonna put our stand in. This comes with the deluxe multi cooker. And we're gonna pour our one cup of water in, okay? And then we're gonna load the egg bite mold on the little stand, the little holder. Makes it easy to get in and out. Lift that up, and we're gonna put that right in here. Okay, make sure the lid's on there nice and tight. Now, I love this because this Deluxe Multi Cooker has a on-off switch. And we're just gonna put it on the egg setting, which is 14 minutes. Okay, and then put the lid on. Oh, it said 13 minutes, so I guess I need to change that. And we'll add two minutes to the time. So I just turned that to add two minutes, and then we'll push start. Okay. Okay, so I think it's coming to pressure. Okay. <laughs> I just had a moment, so yeah. So it's gonna come to pressure here, and we've got the pressure on high, it's good to go. It's gonna come to pressure, then it will start to count down. All right, so while we're waiting on that, Let's go ahead and make some cold brew. Cold brew is not difficult to make, okay? You, you can put Starbucks out of business practically just by making all of our own stuff, all right? So this is the cold brew pitcher. You can use it to make tea, you can use it to make cold brew, kind of up to you. 
And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, this is an espresso ground, Cafe Bustelo. It's an espresso ground. So it's really finely ground and it's a very strong coffee. Whenever I make a decaf of this, which I think I was gonna make decaf is what I was gonna make. Yes, let's make decaf <laughs> because this is actually gonna be something I use. So this is fantastic for making cold brew um, with caffeine. We're gonna make decaf. So I was getting all excited when I first started getting this together. You just need one cup of your coffee, okay? So one cup, this is a half cup scoop. So I just need one cup of my coffee. I'm using Cafe Verona coffee, which is Starbucks coffee. Okay, you can use whatever kind of cold brew that you like, whatever kind of coffee you like. You want it to be kind of finely ground because that gets that flavor out really well. Then you're gonna add five cups of water. And you have to do it slow. This is one of our measuring cups and it has, it's four cups. So we'll add the four cups and then we'll have to um, add some more water. Okay. This comes in, these cups come in a set of four and you get the um, quarter cup, one cup, two cup, and four cup. And they're really cool because I can look right here and see the markings. I don't have to squat down or hold it up or anything like that. They're also dishwasher safe. So we're just using them for water today. That's pretty simple. So this is just gonna take a moment to kind of flow through. We gotta put this in here. Then we're gonna let it sit in the fridge for 24, for 12 hours to 24 hours. So um, I like to let it sit overnight so that it has really great flavor. By tomorrow afternoon, I will be ready, okay, to drink this. And then when you're done, when you're ready, you just pull this infuser part out and your coffee is ready to go. And you can use your grounds, you know, to put in your compost or put around your plants or whatever. It's really good for that. So, um, there we go. <laughs> I knew I wasn't doing something right. You have to hold this in to start it. Okay. And then it says run. Oh my gosh. Okay. I use it for rice and stuff all the time. So um, I guess I was just camera shy or something. So um, so we're gonna let this go. So now tomorrow I'll be able to have the egg bites. I'll be able to have the cold brew coffee. It'll all be good to go. We have it our little coffee station over here. I bought some syrups. Um, you can get them, you know, whatever grocery store you shop at, just coffee syrups. So, um, and if you wanna know how Starbucks makes a recipe, get your Starbucks app like your favorite cold your favorite coffee if you want to know what the recipe is for it, you can google it or you can just get your starbucks app and then go like you're going to order it and then go like you're going to change it and you'll see like one of the things i discovered is that um my pumpkin coffee my pumpkin spice coffee that i like it was always so sweet and i liked it but it was always so sweet well i realized they put three scoot three squirts of the sh of the syrup in there i don't need that much so i do two squirts and so once i realized that by ordering online i I figured out how I could change it. So you could, could do that so you know what do you like. If you like the pumpkin spice, you can order pumpkin spice um, cr um, syrup and you can make your own at home. There's no reason that you have to, uh, that you have to um, pay all that money. Although I do like buying Starbucks. So, um, all right. So, uh, but sometimes, you know, you're trying to save money. Right now we're trying to save money, right? So this is a great way to save money. I'm using the infusion pitcher, and you can also use this to infuse your water if you want to put some veggies or like cucumber in it, not veggies, fruit or cucumber in it, um, or if you want to make like tea, like my mom used to make sun tea back in the day, so um, you can do the same kind of thing. So maybe you like um, an Earl Grey lavender and you want to drink it cold, you can make a whole pitcher of it. Just buy your um, your leaves um, already, you know, kind of ground up and ready, one cup in here with five cups of water, let it steep overnight and you'll have that cold brew tea as well. One of the things that's great about cold brew is that it doesn't have as much acid in it. So if you get upset stomach from drinking coffee, this is the way to do it. And if you, after you've cold brew it, you can microwave it or heat it on the stove to get it nice and warm again. Um, so that if you like your coffee warm, but um, going through that hot brewing process um, adds a lot of 
acid to the coffee. So, all right, this is going to come to pressure. So when it comes out, I'll post a course video of it coming out, but it's going to add, uh, it's going to do that. And then let's see, um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed um, with some tips of how to make your own um, Starbucks little treats at your house. And if you guys want to see something else, make sure you let me know. Go ahead and comment below with, with a trick or a tip that you'd like to learn. Be happy to share with you guys. Have a great night. Okay, we're back. So this has gone off. It's gone through its whole course of um, the 14 minutes and it's gone off. It actually went off a few minutes ago. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it to its side so the steam doesn't go up on my cabinets and I'm gonna push the steam release button and, and it's gonna release the steam. Just a little bit of steam left in there. So we're gonna go ahead and release that steam till the red little button goes down, the pressure indicator. I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna um, go ahead and open this up. One of the things I love about this um, new pressure cooker is that it has a lid holder right here so it can hold that lid for me. So I don't, you always wonder like, where do we put the lid? Okay, so I have this right here on, I put it on the, the cutting board for the sizzle skillet and we're gonna open that up. Look at how awesome these look. So fun, so cute. Look at that, oh, and they smell amazing. They smell amazing. So we'll go ahead and put this off. Everything is a little bit warm. So we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna grab a fork and take one of these out. They kind of just slide right out because of the oil that's in there. And then I'll cut it in half so that you can see what it looks like. Super easy delicious egg bites so exciting okay the test is in the taste right mm. so good these will be absolutely perfect for a quick breakfast on the go in the morning All right, so I want to show you how easy it is to finish up your cold brew after you have made it. Just as a recap, we put one cup of decaf coffee in here, Cafe Verona. This is just a great way to make your Starbucks coffee at home. We put one cup of the coffee and five cups of water. So what I'm doing now is I took the lid off. It's been sitting in the fridge for about 24 hours. I'm just going to pull out the um, infuser and one thing I didn't mention the other day is that the infuser actually has a different um, bottom piece for tea so um, it has a little bit wider um, holes so you can actually infuse that tea a little bit better we'll just put that in the um, silicone the four cup silicone prep bowl put this lid back on I've already got my cup here with some ice in it and so I'm gonna make myself a latte, a decaf latte right now. So I just have my um, vanilla syrup here and um, I think at Starbucks they use like two or three pumps. I'm just going to use um, just one tablespoon, um, which is basically maybe one and a half, which is basically like one and a half pumps, <laughs> okay? And then I'm gonna open up my coconut milk. So I have coconut milk here and I actually like my coffee, a little more coffee-y and not so milky. So you can froth your milk if you want to make this um, warm, or you can use almond milk, or you can use regular milk, or you can use cream, whatever you want. Um, and then I'm just going to, because I'm not going to use all of this milk, I'm just going to store it in my little mix and measure thing here. I'm not saying the official name for this thing. I'm measure, mix, and pour. Anyway, it used to be called Measure Mix and Pour. Anyway, this is um, Measure Mix and Pour. It's designed for salad dressings. We're going to use it. Oops, do not want that open. Give it a good shake. Get those lumps out. All right. And we're going to pour this in here. It's about right there. Open this up. Pour my coconut milk in there. 
Obviously there's a little blob. Coconut milk is really, really thick. Okay, that should probably be enough to make it really creamy. I'll get a spoon, I'll give it a stir, and top it off with some more coffee. Why not, right? Perfect. I didn't even have to add any sugar. If you like sugar, you can add some sugar to it. But here it is, coffee. Ready to go for my afternoon treat.